look at Vacuum. Man, Houston, the town. They got women for walking down the street. Boy, flagging the men folks down. Boy, you know Houston. Man, it's action town. Hey, 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 everybody. It is time for your Browns Friday fumble. Hold on it. Don't try to pick it up and run. My name is Dave. I am Dylan. And we are here to talk Browns football on another Victory Friday. This is the first consecutive Victory Fridays that we have ever hosted on the Browns Friday fumble. Well, and this is, again, this is a a troubling place for stat makers these days. Mm-hmm. The fo- fine folks at CBS Sports are going to... Stat makers and stat takers. They're going to have trouble coming up with new The Last Time stats for the Browns. Yeah, that seems like they're milking them pretty dry. So at this point, we're going to have to go with The Last Time the Browns won outside the state of Ohio. Yes, that's good. Uh, the Last Time the Browns won before 4.15 p.m. Yeah, something like that. But th- they're going to have to work a little harder. Uh, Because the Browns... uh, Well, they keep winning. They gone streaking. They They gone streaking, Dylan. They daggone gone streaking. There he is out there with his wiener flopping around the Browns. Yeah. Gone streaking. And hey, it was quite enjoyable. Oh, man. I uh, tell you one thing. Watch the game. Definitely watch the game. Definitely 100%. Definitely had a tough bye week of no games. Sat down. Oh, yeah. I had to schedule a getaway yeah. weekend. Yeah. Because otherwise... What are you going to do? Sit there and watch, what, like, the Panthers? G- no. <laughs> yeah. What, am I going to turn on the Fox okay. NFC feed? I don't think Pittsburgh so. Pittsburgh football? No way. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah. So, watch the game. Yeah. From the pleasure of my couch. Mm. And I'm not going to lie to you, Dylan. This is 100% true. After the Browns went up 28 to nothing... Mm-hmm. There were faint traces of tears in my eyes. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, the sort of elation it was, that I was experiencing yeah. is uh, it was kind of a big deal. And it and you know it's different than what we I believe we experienced with the Cavaliers' run to the finals and ultimately yeah. the championship. I think it's a different feeling. It is than that because with with LeBron, you kind of have this like. There's like this yeah. peaked, uh, just positive energy that, you know, it's right. going to happen. We got this. It's going to happen. It's the we got this. Right, right. You could always work on scenarios where it right. worked out. Yes. With the Browns, this year, it's kind of completely unexpected. Yeah. I di- especially, who would have thought we'd be better after the oh. teardown? What? When's the last time in November that you've been excited to watch a football game, Dave? Against a good team. Yeah. You when's went, the last time? 2007? This is another one for the stat makers. I even, don't even know. Even D- last time Derek Dave Anderson, and Dylan were excited for a game in November. I mean, Derek Anderson wasn't putting up great numbers in 2007, I'll tell you that much. No, he was not. Well, not he, in November. <sighs> not in November. It Ryan is true. Hoyer was terrible. Yeah, by the time he got to November. Yeah. 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 Who knows it's, when's the last time? It was a thing of beauty to watch a mm-hmm. good quarterback, a good defense, completely dismantle the team. Oh, gosh. And you trusted. You trusted every possession. And, yeah. Did they take the gas off in the second half? Yeah. Okay. So Should they have? Well, we want to talk about that because it was indeed... A tale of two halves. It was a tale of two halves. It's true. And I just got a couple things I want to say about it. Here we go. Why not try out some packages? Well, you have, listen to me, you have a 28 point buffer zone. Now, and you're not going to get out there and try some three back sets, you're not going to try some five wide spreads. Well, they did that in the first half. You're not going to try some wildcat options. You're not going to uh, try some reverse end around quadruple picks. I just feel like they didn't want to, you know, put too much down on film for other teams. How about some screens? 
How about some sc- perfect that screen that we've been missing? So you're you're mad that they took the their their foot off the gas pedal. I mean, this guy was spitting poison. Four touchdowns in a single half, and they ripped his nutsack off. Wow, they ripped his goddamn nutsack off, Dave. That's bold and kind of gruesome. Thankfully, he grew it back after the game. Well, obviously. it's a little gruesome. Um, I, you know, you're trying to to run out the clock. You're trying to get, uh, you know, Nick Chubb involved. You're trying to just extend. You know, extend those drives. Blah, blah, blah. You sound like, you know what you sound like? An analytics guy, Dave. You know I'm a football guy. You got to start thinking like you know a, I'm football a football guy. guy. You know we I'm a football Greg guy. We got Greg Williams in place. We got Freddie the K-Man Kitchens down there. These are football guys. They are football guys. We got to make the can't football argue moves. That. It's true. Uh, you know, they didn't go to the prevent defense. You know, Woody Hayes said, after they asked him why they scored why they went for a two-point conversion after they were up 50. He said, because I couldn't go for three, Dave. Wow, that's not... You're right. You can't go for three. And they had changed that rule the year before. He seemed pretty salty about that still. I agree. (laughs) All right, let's take a look at a little bit of Browns news. Yeah. We know the big news. Well, you know where we get the Browns news, first of all. www.clevelandbrowns.com Unfortunately, this week, <coughs> we uh, our, our attention has been turned a little bit. Baker versus everybody. Baker versus the world, but specifically Baker versus ESPN. Yeah, the world of ESPN Entertainment and Sports Network. Yeah. Well, uh, Baker, like, it, like I said, he, he did... Uh, he did come back, uh, spitting that poison that he was spitting in that first half. He came back after the game, but the post game presser, uh, spit out some poison there. Said he didn't like you going down to Cincinnati. Totally reasonable. Totally reasonable. But then what happened, Dave? Well, what happened was all of a sudden Hugh Jackson calls out his little media squad, Mm -hmm. much like he did on his very similar to Obama apology tour. Mm Mm-hmm. And he gets all of his little sycophants mm-hmm. in the ESPN media to go up and defend him because he can't do it himself. Yep. Damian well, Woodpecker. What? Damian Woodpecker, Stephen Omega Smythe. These guys, they, the whole crew down there at ESPN, yeah. they're all mad because Baker doesn't, doesn't want to hug Hugh Jackson. Guess what? I don't yeah. want to hug Hugh Jackson. Well, the first thing they said was they, what it was that he disrespected him. He disrespected him. Guess and what? And that he did basically the same thing that they did that Hugh did when he transferred from Tech over to Oklahoma, which obviously, first of all, not a similar situation. Not at all. Which Baker then pointed out directly to the first take Instagram, and we all applauded. We all applauded. But some, uh, then some other things happened, Dave. Yes, uh, and it got a little weird after that. It got a little bit of a kind of a, you know, one of those things you've seen. It, it they took it because Baker is young, yeah, from this new generation. They're not even called millennials. I don't not even know even what they're called anymore. Young people. He the took youth, it to social media. The youths. He said, "I'm going to let the world decide. I'm taking this to social media." Yeah. And so first thing first, first shot was fired by Hugh. Yeah. Who caught? Who, who was caught deleting all of his photos of him and Baker off of his Facebook? They're gone. Yeah, his Insta purged. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a real move. I mean, when you do that, it's finalized. Yeah, you can't right bring after that. that back. I mean, then Baker, as uh, apparently is he's want to do, uh, right after that, immediately after that, posted up like seven gym selfies. Well, why wouldn't row. he? Why wouldn't he? I know he's got that revenge bod going. Yeah, I mean, he's Lord. working it. He's working it. Stephen Omega Smythe was at Target. He's buying some cute holiday pajama bottoms, a couple of pints of Ben and Jerry's, and a DVD of Love Actually. And what's he got on tap for this? What's he just going to go home by himself with all this? No. No way. He was down in Cincy, Hugh Jackson's house. They're about to have themselves an evening. Mm-hmm. Well, they got to cry it out. Yep. 
Got to cry it out. You know, the only thing that was not there was the bottle of rosé. And you know that that was already in Hugh's fridge. Already in the fridge. They're about to have a girls' night and just... Let it all out. Let it all out. Let it all out. Classic breakup behavior. Well, and then right after that, because that was Tuesday night, on Wednesday morning, uh, and this is part of our insider thing i know you guys know that we uh we are super insiders um, well, we're not espn insiders right we're that's... not we're not espn insiders but we are insiders uh freddie kitchens actually called into first take to speak directly with woodpecker and omega Smythe in defense of mayfield and, and they did not air it they didn't air they were, it they were covering it up right but we managed to get a hold of that audio we have obtained the tape mm-hmm and here it is right now. Does he look like a bitch? What? Does he look like a bitch? No! Then why are you trying to fuck him like a bitch, Brett? I didn't. Yes, you did. Yes, you did, Brett. You tried to fuck him. Harsh stuff there. Hey, from, man. From Freddie, the kitchen kitchen. You know, honestly, I didn't know Freddie had it in him, but... You know you want a guy like that. Football guy. <laughs> All right, we don't usually do this. We're a, we're a brown show. We'll be the first to admit we're a brown show. But some rumors We got, kind of got caught up in a tangled web, though, didn't we? This yeah, a little week? bit of a rumor mill that, uh, that the Browns had placed a waiver ca- claim on, uh, I would say, disgraced. Yeah, disgraced. Disgraced, disavowed, f- former, probably overall terrible person, yeah. Reuben Foster. Yeah, right. After being arrested on domestic violence charges. But it turns out that, because you, you actually got this hot tape, that that's not what was going on in the Browns' offices. It's true. What actually happened in the Browns' offices, at least, was... It, it was... Well, I got the inside scoop Yeah, that John Dorsey was enjoying a Reuben sandwich right. with a Foster's beer. Right. And so Completely that was a misunderstanding. That's what got leaked to Adam Schefter. Yeah. But because of this, we went and did a little more digging. Got us thinking. Washington football, that wasn't the only claim they made that day for Reuben Foster. There were some other people that they tried to claim, but due to various reasons, um, they couldn't. And so let's run down that list right yeah. now. The other uh, claim they tried to make, um, really kind of taking after the Browns head coaching search, looking to the business world, they tried to get former Enron CEO Jeffrey Skilling. Yeah. I mean, a solid performer, but again, uh, another disgraced guy. Yeah, yeah, it's not the... They're not really a... Uh, yeah. They're not, it's not really a, a, about the class of the organization there. You know, kind of on this on that same line of thinking, they they wanted to get a uh, place a two for claim uh, on Michael Vick and Ray Rice. Not smart. The, a PR nightmare. PR nightmare. Um, and I guess maybe in that PR, maybe this wasn't for the football field. Their next one, notorious bully Richie Incognito. Maybe he was going to be yeah. put into the PR department, right? To bully the people giving the negative PR, yeah. but that claim was turned down by the league. Some, some intimidation tactics there, yeah. And uh, I think, and this again, this is me just uh, theorizing here, but I think maybe a couple of those other claims were to cover up this claim because yeah. this one is, you really one would want to bury this one. And yeah. He was, uh, they put a claim in for Anthony Weiner. Once proud congressman. Right. Thoroughly disgraced on his own accord. Yeah. There are a few things these days politically that we can agree on, but that Anthony Weiner's a terrible dude. That's, that's one, one of them. them. Let's shake hands across the aisle on that one. There it is. There it is. Uh, also, uh, they made a claim for Wu Tang owning provocateur and, again, we use the word a lot disgraced pharmaceutical business whatever dude he was yeah martin scarelli yeah who was recently cut from bill Belichick's coaching staff so he was available but the next one was interesting uh they put a claim in for robert griffin the third 
So that was sensible. I mean, they had some success with him early on. They also uh, put in a claim for another disgraced pizza guy, the Papa Papa John, and that was denied because of the whole Pizza Hut thing. And then finally, the last claim they put in uh, was for uh, former tight end Aaron Hernandez. So let's get on with our head coaching search update because that's on everybody's mind still, right? It is. Even um, though it was two weeks ago, you know? We've all seen the rumors about Mike McCartney from the Packers and John DeFilippo Soravino uh, from the Ravens, but uh, we've got some new intel coming in from our trusted Berea sources this week, folks. Listen up. We've got... Listen, Dylan. Shut it down. All right. Whoa. Oh, This is Greg Williams here. Uh, There is no coaching search. I've ended the coaching search because I've been offered the job multiple times and I've taken it multiple times. Yes. Do all of the paperwork say interim on them? Yes. I will admit that. Is there a new bit of stuff on my face at every press conference, be it a smudge or a speck or a piece of dirt? Yes. But the interim tag will be coming off as soon as I get the paperwork done because I am a leader of men, and these men are being led by me, the leader of men. We're getting takeaways. We're scoring points. I've turned these gentlemen, these good gentlemen, into road dogs. And I'm also wearing shorts still. So you can put this talk to bed about Mike McCartney and Bruce Arians. He's a great guy. I worked with Bruce Arians at a Dairy Queen in North Dakota. He was excellent at dipping the cones and having them still remain upright. We did that together one summer. That was amazing. But he's not going to coach this football team because I am coaching it. I am already the coach. I've already moved my stuff into that office. So put it to bed. Dylan, are you can you put it to bed for me? Tuck it in. Consider it done, Greg. Put it in the out show me you're putting it in the bed. Okay. I'm I'm okay. tuck, tuck it in. It in yeah. Tight. And a kiss on the forehead. And I want you to sing a little song to it. All right. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Thank you, Dylan. Now I'm gonna be quiet because that's in bed. Now on to a new segment, Dave, because guess what? We are in in the hunt. The hunt. So we got our new segment here, Brown's Friday Fumble Pizza Hut in the Hunt Playoff Predictor, brought to you by Papa John's. Brought to you by Papa John's because that who is sponsors this. Dylan, for some reason, wanted to put Pizza Hut back in the name. Uh, I don't know, folks. I, 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 I just... Papa John's is a inferior product. Let's just move on past this. Um, listen, it's time to talk scenarios, and yeah. the scenarios are going to be complicated right yep. now because there's a lot of season left. But let's well, take a look at what needs to happen. As our friend Anthony Discostini pointed out yes, handily that the Browns actually have a lot of control over their own destiny, surprisingly. If they win out, they got an 80% chance of making the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to take a little help from our friends. Oh, man. Do and a lot it. of different friends here. So let's take yep. a look at the scenarios for this week for the Browns to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. First of all, Jags, Falcons, Jets, Bills, and Oilers have to win this weekend. Uh, the S&P 500 has to jump over 2,800. But that's doable. That's totally doable. That's totally doable. Bengals have to continue to lose and lose this week. Zion Williamson has to declare for the NBA draft by December 21st. Pittsburgh football must lose in week 13, but win in week 14, and then tie in week 15. Kind of a strange scenario there. But it could happen. Colin Sexton, uh, Cavalier, uh, he's got to drop a minimum of 15 points per game average over the next week. This one is not as far-fetched as you might think. Oh, no. 
the Harbaugh property brothers have to swap coaching positions. Kind of like a Freaky Friday situation. Kind of like a Freaky Friday. So you know in Baltimore, whatever Harbaugh is there, he could be out at any time because oh. they're underperforming. Yeah. And let's face it, Dylan. Yeah. You saw the match. Oh, my God. You watched the match the against match. that team upstairs. The match. Against Shigan. Uh-huh. Yeah. The other property brother is terrible against an Ohio State University. Yeah. He cannot beat those beach nuts. Beach nut blowout weekend is what they call it. And so... A real BBW. I can see him getting called out on that and swapping because, yeah. hey... One property brother's as good as the other one. Yep. Try out the other one. Yeah. See what you got. Well, in this one, uh, you know, I don't want to talk, you know, over everybody's head here, but uh, the it's Brown- important though. It's yeah, important. it is important. It is important, and it's and again, very possible. The Browns must have the Sun Square Saturn in their composite chart, and Venus and the Moon Square Uranus, amongst other aspects. The Saturn influence is restrictive, so there will be a strong need to define their relationships. Which is the passing game. Yes, yes. We've got a great start here uh, defining relationships with Baker, telling the truth about his Mercury rising to first take. Uh, However, the Uranus influence fights that definition and restriction. So what you got to do is circle that Panthers game in Week 14 is pivotal. Because you have to look at it that the Uranus is the running game. We got some learning to do, so let's know your foe. Houston, Texas, home of the Houston, Texas. Yes, the Houston, Texas. We covered the city of Houston in our ill-fated Friday Foul Tip episode, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we will spare you the I-10 jokes this time around. Mm -hmm. Even though they're great. We know what's on your mind. You had this one circled since week three when Baker the Bake Man Mayfield got put into the starting lineup. Mm-hmm. Mayfield versus Whedon. Sooner versus Cowboy. Battle of Oklahoma quarterbacks. And even though Brandon Whedon is old enough to be Baker's T-ball coach, it is still something we've been waiting for. So let's see if Baker can get up for this big game. The Browns defense is going to have a heck of a task corralling this Cowboy, however. Unless they bring a giant flag to with them because that gets him every time. But let's take a look at this Texas roster. Mm-hmm. We got some real goodies in here, buddy. Well, a wide receiver, Dave. We got Cleveland DeAndre Hopkins Airport. Pulp Fiction protagonist Vincent Smith. At left tackle, son of Brown's defensive end, Miles Garrett, Julian Davenport. At center... Zatch Fulton. Mary had a Kendall Lamb. At tight end, Family Guy star Ryan Griffin. Presented without comment, wide receiver Kiki Cootie. Kiki Cootie. Inventor of the IBM cloud, Deshaun Watson. On to the defensive side of the ball. The big guy, the most marketable player in the NFL, brother of J.J. Watt, J.J. Watt. Skateboarder and popular member of the Jackass crew, Brandon Dunn. I love it when he does those kick flips. Ugh. One of the best. Just does an air horn to a guy's ear. Yep. Hits him with a big hand coming around a corner. Oh, the big hand. A character that a middle school librarian made up for the book fair, D.J. Reader. Whitney Merciful. Jadavian Tears of a Clowny. At safety, chicken farm owner Mike Tyson. Backup singer Sharice Wright. Rap computer Andre 3000, Hal 9000. Peter Jambalaya. And at cornerback, two good boys, Jonathan and Joseph. Is that music I hear? Nope. Is that music I hear? Here it comes. Here comes the music. Guys, it's time for the Baker's Dozen. Baker Mayfield's Baker's Dozen. Top six. The top six. Now. Needs an explanation. If you're a first time listener to this podcast, which by our download number said you probably are, here's what happens in the Baker's Dozen. 
popular popular term maybe if you live outside the United States you would go to a, a bakery and get a dozen items be mm-hmm. they rolls croissants cookies donuts in the morning in the morning because bakeries are only open in the morning yep the baker woke up at like three so he could start the bread mm-hmm. stuff like that nobody knows why he does this but he does yeah. and that sleep deprivation says to him you know what guys if you're gonna buy 12 or something I'm going to do you a solid. I'm going to throw in one more. I'm going to toss one in there. You know what? You're going to be... If you got 12 people to give donuts to, take one for yourself. Eat it. So that's what he does. Which is very comparable to what our quarterback does on a Sunday. Yes. So... You got a pass. I'm going to give you a pass. Keep in mind, we are in contact with Baker Mayfield. He sends us these answers to a particular question that we ask him. And he gives us the top six answers because his uniform number is six. Mm. So this week, the top six beefs that Baker Mayfield had with Hugh Jackson. Number six. Hugh consistently would throw away takeout menus from the office menu folder. When called out on it, he would just tell him to look it up on his phone. That is so annoying because those are always PDFs. Yeah, and they're so small. I don't want They're like multiple pages. No, I gotta, it, I gotta expand. That's it why we made the folder, up. Hugh. Number five, he was always using Baker's fancy face wash in the shower, and it was her, his turn to buy a bottle. He'd buy the cheap stuff, and again, when called out on it, he would just say, "It's just as good. It's just soap." It's not just soap. Hugh. It's not, Hugh. Do you care about your complexion? Number four, he was always adding episodes of the Real Sex series to the watch list in their shared HBO Go account. That's really rude. Like, if you're going to watch that, yeah, that's fine. But Baker also shared that with his girlfriend. Yeah. And so now she thinks he's into weird nudists doing and his, yoga. And his aunt. And his aunt. She's just going on there trying to watch Sesame Street yeah. with his niece. Uh, so it's it's just ridiculous. Just clogging up the watch just, next list. Just watch it on your own. You don't have to put it in the, the queue. queue. You know, number three, I don't think you put gas in the truck once. Not even once. Number two, he would invite Tyler Haley over and then kind of disappeared for hours at a time. Like leaving Baker up to try and entertain him the whole time. Like, yeah. come on, man. Like you invi- why'd you invite him over? I'm trying to play Red Dead. Yeah, exactly. And then Todd's over there going, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Like, that's not what this game is about, Todd. Yeah. There's a lot more to it than that. It's a story. I'm going to finish going through these dead bodies because there's a lot of loot in there. Okay? There's the, the dialogue is what you should be paying attention to. Yeah, pay attention to the story. And the number one beef that Baker Mayfield had with Hugh Jackson, terrible football coach. All right, Dylan. Here we are. Coming off two W's in a row. Yeah. You could call this 2008. You just had two W's. Mm. What's next for our boys? Well, Dave, you know, I thought I was going to be funny this year. Yep. Thought I was going to be able to, to joke about our tie. That we had in game one. Yep. Which you the called. The whole year through. And you called it before the tie. I'm going to let did. everybody, if you guys want to go back to episode one of this I year. Did. He called it too close to call before the tie happened. Before it was too close to call. And then guess what? Subsequent games all called very closely. Very, very closely. Within inches. Of inches. So I'm going to change uh, carts midstream here, Dave. I'm going to predict the Brownies win. 26 to 17 for the Houston Texans. I love it. Let's get classic. Mm-hmm. I also Baker believe... Baker is not going to have an issue with this brother of J.J. Watt, J.J. Watt. No, no. He's too marketable. He's too marketable, and he won't get down and do the dirty work. Right. And this Jadavian clown, I don't even think he's going to get anywhere near... Him, not with the treader train in place. Nope. 
not with DJ Bitcoin. Anyway, my prediction, it's going to be pretty close. Not oh. too close to call. Okay. But pretty close. Yeah. I think uh, Dr. Watson is going to have his fun. They're going to fly in and out of DeAndre Hopkins Airport. Mm-hmm. So they might score a couple of points. Secondary is a little banged up. But, sorry. Bacon chub. Bacon chub. Bacon chub. Just like my favorite sandwich, the bacon chub, I it's it's too much. You're going to get a bacon chub with a side of juice. Yeah. And there are no foods that correspond with Njoku, but the, the offense is just too much. Yeah. It's going to be a high-flying game. Browns win 33-24. to 24. Ooh, I like that. Knock High that flying. Texas win streak. The Houston-Texas win streak will come to an end this week yep. down in Houston in Texas Stadium. All right, folks, thank you for listening. Uh, my name is Dave. You can follow me on Twitter at Democo. And I'm Dylan. You can follow me at Dylan B. Price. Um, thank you for listening. I uh, hope you liked last week's more unconventional episode. I know we did. And I hope you like this more conventional episode like we did. If you want to follow us collectively, we sometimes remember to log into the at Friday Fumble account on game day and produce excellent gifts to go with the game. So, once again, thank you for listening. This is your Browns Friday Fumble.